Okay. All right. Once again, welcome to the January installment of the, of the Kansas 4-H equine webinar series. I am Kelsey Nordyke. I am the Southeast Region 4-H Specialist and also the Kansas 4-H Ag Science Specialist. I work primarily uh, with counties in the eastern region of the state, as well as working with the projects that are agriculture related. So if you have questions about those things, you can always reach out to me. I'll include my email in the the in the chat box here in just a moment. A reminder to go ahead and keep your microphones muted and your cameras turned off. And so far, everyone has done that. So thank you very much for that. That helps us to just be um, pretty swift and efficient through the evening. If you do have questions, we welcome them and we want to hear them and know them. Um, and so feel free to enter those in the chat as we go. We are going to wait till the end of the presentation to address all of those questions. Uh, you are also welcome to unmute at the end of the presentation for Q&A as well. And then I'll make sure that I include Dr. Douthat's contact information in the chat as well before we log off for the evening. Tonight's episode is being recorded. It will be shared to the Kansas 4-H Equine Webinar Series webpage. And with that, I would like to introduce to you Dr. Teresa Douthat. Dr. Douthat is a professor in the Department of Animal Science here at Kansas State University. She also serves on our 4-H Horse Action Team and has extension, extensive knowledge in the horse industry um, and showing, and she is here to share with us tonight. Uh, has some firsthand knowledge as an exhibitor, but also firsthand knowledge as a horse show mom. So we're excited to hear from Dr. Douthat. And with that, uh, I'm going to mute and let you take it away. All right, thank you, Kelsey. Thank you for having me here tonight to talk about showmanship. As a youth exhibitor, this showmanship and horsemanship were my favorite classes, and um, I have judged a lot of horse shows. I've done a lot of state fairs all across the country, um, have seen a, a lot of showmanship classes, and so I'm going to give you some, some tips and some things based on my experiences as an exhibitor, but also as a horse show judge. So I'm going to share my screen here with you. And I'm going to pull up some slides, hopefully. There we go. Okay, so we're going to talk about showmanship tips. I've got quite a bit for you, so I'm just going to dive right in and, and get going here. So I think one thing that happens sometimes when people are watching a horse show is they, they maybe don't understand what the difference is between showmanship and halter. And as a judge, the criteria is very different. In both classes, you're going to lead your horse in. You know, we're, we're not going to ride in either one of these classes. And sometimes you'll see an exhibitor do really well in one, but not the other. And sometimes people who are watching have a hard time understanding, well, you know, what's the difference? Why did they do so well this time and, and not in the very next class? And so I want to just start with, with what are some of the differences between whole halter and showmanship. So on halter, we are judging that horse. We are judging his conformation. We're judging the way he's built. I'm looking at how long his neck is, at the angle of his shoulder, at the depth of his heart, the length of his back. Now I'm judging how this horse is put together. I don't really care how he behaves. I don't really care how the exhibitor, you know, how she looks or how she handles him. I'm looking at the conformation of the horse. Now I say I don't care how he behaves. If he won't stand still and I can't get a good look at him, that's a whole different issue. Um, but but the primary focus here is the confirmation of the horse. In showmanship, I'm judging the exhibitor and I'm looking at how well that exhibitor can handle the horse and how well he or she has prepared the horse for the show ring. And so here training of the horse is really important because it tells me how much time that exhibitor has spent working with that horse. And so in one class, I'm judging the exhibitor. In the other, I'm judging the horse and, and I'm judging the way he's put together. So the criteria is really very different. Our focus today is going to be on showmanship, however, and so we'll just dive right in. 
you know, the first thing, if you're going to show in showmanship, you kind of have to get your stuff together. Um, and that's going to include the equipment. There are some differences in equipment based on the style and the breed of the horse. You've got the option to show Western or English in showmanship. Now here in Kansas, 95% of the horses we see at a horse show will be, will be quarter horses or paints, maybe Appaloosas, but generally they're going to be some sort of stock horse. So that's where I will focus the bulk of this, um, but I will show you some examples of some other styles that are acceptable as well. So in, in showmanship, we're not going to ride them, but you are going to need, if you're doing the Western option, you'll need a halter for your horse and some sort of lead shank. You can use a rope lead rope, but more commonly we would see a leather shank with a chain attached to it. If a chain is attached, it has to be run under the horse's jaw. You also have the option to do English style if you would like to, and, and this is perfectly acceptable. And if you're going to do that, you've got a couple more options here. You can use a halter or you can use a bridle on your horse. If you're doing the English option, you are allowed to carry a whip. You should never touch your horse with it. And, and we don't wanna see it being used excessively, uh, but a whip is allowed in, in the English style classes. At some shows, you'll see where a horse comes in and there are two handlers. We do not allow that in Kansas 4-H competition. We also don't allow the use of lip chains. And if you're not familiar with those, sometimes you see these at, at breed shows, particularly with stallions that can be kind of difficult to handle, um, but they'll run the chain into the horse's mouth and they'll run and across the front of the gums here, um, right under the lip on the horse's gums. We do not allow that in 4-H competition. If you're going to use the chain, it needs to go under the horse's jaw. Okay, so we've got to have a halter and lead on the horse. You can use a leather halter, you can use a nylon halter, you can use a rope halter, you can use whatever kind you want. But if it fits the horse's head, it's going to make that horse look more attractive. And it's also going to give you more seamless communication with that horse. So if we look at this horse on the bottom here, hopefully you can see below the, the eye, we've got kind of this, this knot or kind of this bone that sticks out. What we would like to see on our halter is for the nose band to fit right underneath that bone. Um, on the horse on top, that's exactly where it's at. You know, on the horse here on the bottom, that nose band is hanging about an inch and a half, probably below kind of that little knot on the head. And this halter is just, it's just too big. Um, the one on top, the, the throat latch piece fits from very tightly across the back of the jaw. There's nothing hanging down under the horse's head. It makes his head look very attractive. And when you're leading this horse, you're going to have very you're not going to have to move your hand very far and he's going to feel that halter move. Whereas the horse on the bottom, you know, this halter is hanging too far down on its nose. The throat latch piece is not up here in the throat latch. The piece on the bottom is hanging down. You know, it just, it kind of looks sloppy. It doesn't fit the horse's head. It doesn't flatter the horse's head. And, you know, when you move, the rope, this halter is going to have to really move around quite a bit before the horse feels it. So it's really not going to be a, a very effective communication tool either. Here's one that fits pretty well. That nose band is, is up high, kind of right where it should be. Throat latch piece is fitting pretty tight. You know, this looks nice. Here we've got one. She's got a nice pretty show halter, but it's too big for this horse. The nose band's hanging clear down here, you know, more than halfway to the horse's nostrils. It's just, it's just too big. It's not very flattering. Now I mentioned that there are some other styles that are appropriate with Arabians. You'll see halters that are that are much more dainty. Um, such as this, and those are acceptable as well. Um, we, we wouldn't typically use these on a stock horse, but on, on some of your other breeds, those would get, that halter would be considered acceptable. Here's someone showing in the English style. Again, that is allowed. It's, it's perfectly acceptable. 
Most of the time, if you're showing in English clothing, you would use a plain leather halter as opposed to one with, with silver. Uh, but here you see the chain is run over the horse's nose. Again, that is not allowed in Kansas 4-H competition. Okay, so I've got an, an assortment of little video clips here that I'm going to show you throughout. Um, these are some ranch horses that were just pulled off the pasture. Um, and, you know, when you're practicing at home, they, sometimes you don't uh, put on the fanciest equipment. But anyway, these are, these are some ranch horses, and we're going to demonstrate some things for you. And so I'm going to go ahead and, and play the first little video clip here for you. All right, so this horse has been pretty disrespectful. We've got this halter on, we've got it shortened up, now we're going to put a chain on him. So to put a chain on, you're going to start on the side from where you lead the horse, the near side. You're going to go from the outside in, and you're going to run your chain through this first loop, okay? Most of the time, we just run it around the, to the other side, but if your horse has never had a chain on before, and he's pretty sensitive to the pressure, you can go through this loop on the bottom. Okay, so it goes in on the side, down under the horse's chin, and through this loop. Then what we will do on the other side is we're going to bring this chain up, and we're going to go from the inside out on the second side. Okay, and then we're going to run it up to the top ring on the halter, and you're going to snap it. And you want to snap it so that this little handle, this little piece that you push on to snap is facing out. You don't want that poking into your horse. Okay, so this way, we're going to have a little more control over this horse. Okay, when he starts trying to push into the exhibitor, we're, we've got a chain on him, and we should have a little more control. All right, this horse has had a chain on before, and he's not particularly sensitive to it, so we're going to show you how we would typically use a chain in showmanship. So we're going to run it. We're going to start the same way. We're going to run it in this ring. We're going to go from the outside in. We're going to run it under the horse's jaw. This time, we're not going to put it in that ring. We're just going to run it under the jaw. We're going to come out the other side. Okay, and we're going to run it up and hook it on this ring up here. Again, with the bottom of the the snap facing out. Okay, so now this exhibitor, when this horse tries walking over the top of him, he's going to have a little more control. Okay, now we've got on this particular chain, we've got maybe four inches here. You would not want to allow any more than that because as an exhibitor, you should never be holding this chain. That's not considered safe. You need to be holding on the leather part. And if we've got too much chain here, and your hand is too far away from the horse, you're not going to have much control. So if you have too much chain right here, what we would do is we'll go ahead and pull this through. We will take this and we will run it through that ring and circle it back down and snap the chain back on itself. This chain is probably not long enough to do that, but some of them you will need to run it through this ring and back down and snap it on itself. Okay, so once you've got your halter and your lead, your lead shank kind of figured out, then you need to think about what you would wear at a horse show. In Kansas 4-H competition, a button-down shirt and jeans are perfectly appropriate. If you're doing the Western option, you would wear your hat and your boots and a belt, and you could be good to go. At the bigger shows, for the guys, a lot of times you'll see them wear a suit along with their hat and boots. You'll see some girls with some pretty fancy showmanship outfits, you know, maybe have some fancy jackets and pants along with the hat and boots, and, and that's great too. You have the English option. You would wear your helmet, your jacket, your breeches, your tall boots, um, or if you're doing the paddock boots, that's fine too, um, with the jawed purse, with the English type halter, that's acceptable. Here's someone with English clothing and a bridle. That's acceptable as well. You know, as a judge, I'm I'm really not that concerned with how fancy your clothing is. 
Um, but I do want to see it be clean, to be ironed, and to fit. Um, if it looks like your shirt's been wadded up in the dryer or in the bottom of your laundry basket for a week and it's got wrinkles, you know, that just sends the signal to me that you really haven't put a whole lot of effort into this. Um, you know, if your pants are too short, probably time to get a new pair that, that actually fit. So they need to be clean, they need to be ironed, and they need to fit. Um, but we're we're pretty flexible. We're not real restrictive on what you have to wear. I've judged a, a lot of state fairs and state 4-H horse shows where they require a white shirt and maybe even a 4-H armband. But in Kansas here, we're, we're pretty flexible with what we let you wear uh, during the horse show. Okay, so the way your horse behaves is going to be pretty important, and we're going to talk quite a bit about how the horse should, should maneuver and, and how he should behave. But other things to think about in showmanship, your horse needs to be in good body condition. I'm judging you as an exhibitor and, and how good a job you've done preparing this horse to show. And if I can you know, count his ribs and his hip bones and, you know, his, his neck is emaciated, you know, he's, he's really not in condition to show. And so in my mind, that, that really doesn't set the best tone. Okay, we want to see a horse who's carrying enough weight that I don't see his ribs and I don't see his hip bones sticking out. Grooming is going to be important. We want to see a nice shiny hair coat and that takes some work on a daily basis. Um, we need to have a good nutrition program and do a good daily grooming uh, to really bring that oil out and make the hair coat look nice. You can clip the horse. You can clip the long hair under the jaw. You can clip the whiskers around the muzzle and the eyes. You can clip out those ears. You can give them a little bridle path here. You can clip the long hairs that are on the legs. Um, and, and really, you can clean a horse up and, and make him look a whole lot nicer with a good clip job. The mane needs to be neat. A lot of our showmanship horses will have a short mane. And typically you'll see it banded as a judge, you know, if it's neat and it's laying down, you know, this, this sets the right impression for me. It looks like you've put some effort into it um, and it really makes that mane lay down. It makes the horse's neck look nice. We see a lot of long manes though, too. You don't have to have a short mane. You'll see here this horse on the bottom, they've got a combination. They did some braiding and some banding here. And they've got the mane combed out. That looks nice. That's perfectly acceptable. You don't have to braid it or band it. If you've got a long mane and it's clean and it's brushed out, that's okay too. Some people even roach the manes. They'll sh completely shave it off. This is okay too. But if you're going to do this option, it needs to be a fresh clip before the horse show. If you do this and then go to a show two weeks later, that mane's probably going to be sticking straight up in the air and it's really not going to look nice. So if you're if you're going to roach the mane, just give it a fresh clip before the horse show. Uh, typically, you would leave a little tuft here over the withers and a little uh, you would leave their forelock. And especially if you're showing in the English option, an English braided mane is perfectly accepted as well. You know, this looks very neat, makes the horse's neck look clean. I'm, I'm good with any of these options. Okay, then when you're leading the horse, your, your position as an exhibitor is important. We want to see you right in line with that horse's throat latch. Sometimes you'll see an exhibitor who positions themselves too far back and they'll, they'll brace their arm out in front and they'll push that horse along. You know, that's, that's not really showing me a very responsive horse if you're having to push him along. Or the more common thing that I see is where an exhibitor gets out in front of their horse and then they're dragging the horse. That also doesn't seem to indicate that the horse is being very responsive. So we'd like to see you be right in line with the horse's throat latch. We also want to see the eyes up. We want to see you looking where you're going. And we want to see these hands up as well. There should be about a 90 degree bend in your elbow. And that should be true for both hands, okay? It should look like if you were carrying a tray of cookies, 
you know, you would, you could put both your hands under that tray and it, it would sit there just fine. This exhibitor on the left, you can see that her arms are down, her eyes are down, and it just doesn't present as polished a picture. We'd rather see the hands up, the eyes up. You look polished, you look confident, you look like you've done some practice, and it really sets the right impression for the judge. Okay, I got some more examples. Here, here is um, some things that we would be looking for at the walk. Okay, so when walking in showmanship, you should be right about your horse's throat latch. Okay, you shouldn't be out in front of them or behind them. Your head should be up. You should be walking quickly. Okay, now this is not really what we want to see in showmanship. He's in the right position. He's by the horse's throat latch, but his head is down. He's not really looking where he's going. Now he's kind of getting ahead of the horse. Okay. We don't want to see someone who's walking real slow with their head down. We want to see, see them walk with their head up like they've got a purpose. And, okay, you want to do the same thing in a trot. Be right at your horse's throat latch, head up, looking where you're going. And if, if you're really good, your legs will move in unison with your horse. And it will be clear that you've done a lot of practice with that horse. You want to keep your horse up next to you. You want to be at the horse's throat latch. And you want to keep your head up, your elbows in next to you. Don't be swinging them around. Okay, so sometimes when a 4 H is having troubles getting their horse to trot, sometimes what I'll see is they get way out in front of the horse and they turn back and look at the horse. Okay, that is not what we want to see. And sometimes these horses, they, they it really can be difficult for them to figure out that they need to trot up next to you. And so this is one of those things that really does take some practice at home. And so, sometimes it takes two people. Maybe you need someone else kind of going behind the horse and helping them to figure out that they can trot with you. Um, you know, just to kind of encourage that horse to move forward. But this is a maneuver that definitely takes some practice at home. Okay, in a pattern or at a horse show, you could be asked to lead the horse in a straight line, maybe in some sort of curved pattern, a half circle or, or maybe a whole circle, might be asked to do some square corners. What we'd like to see is for that horse to be very soft and responsive. We don't really want the exhibitor to have to pull on the horse's head. We want that horse to just move based on the exhibitor's body position. So if the exhibitor kind of turns their shoulders, then the horse understands he needs to start turning as well. And if you do enough practice, he, he will figure that out and you won't have to push that horse's head to get him to go where you want him to go. Yeah, here's an exhibitor who is circling. She's turning towards her horse. You know, her head and her shoulders are giving the horse that signal. And, and so you can see by, based on his body that he's going that way. And it doesn't look like she's really having to push on him. And so that's kind of what we like to see. When you're coming straight towards the judge, you should bring your horse towards the judge rather than yourself. And so, you know, if, if we look at this, this picture here and this exhibitor, the judge should be standing directly in front of the horse. And so as an exhibitor, you're not going to walk straight towards the judge. You're going to walk more towards just, just the outside of that judge's shoulder. And here's another one where, where she's looked looks like she's on a mission and you can see the cone in this picture when in most of our patterns when there's a transition where you go from a walk to a trot or a trot to a walk that's going to be at a cone and so what we want to see is the horse pick up that next gate when that cone is positioned somewhere between the, the horse's head and the horse's shoulder. It should be smooth, it should be willing. We'd like to see that horse, if it's an upward transition, we'd like to see him step up into the jog without lifting his head. If it's, if it's a downward transition, same thing. We don't wanna see the exhibitor pulling on the horse and the horse resisting with his head.
Okay, so in showmanship, if you're supposed to do a transition at a cone, you should make that transition when the cone is between the horse's head and shoulder. And ideally, you'll be able to do it just like that, where the horse didn't even lift his head. Okay, he just kept right on going. Okay, so we're gonna do a transition here. Now he's walking, gonna walk, he's got his head down, his hands are down. I see this a lot in 4-8 shows. He's supposed to pick up a trot at the second cone. He didn't start asking for it till he was at the cone. Then he was late when he actually did it. So most of the time on these transitions, you know, that horse is not going to step up instantly. So you need to be thinking ahead and you need to do some practice at home. Does it take my horse three steps before he actually trots? If so, I need to ask for that transition three steps ahead of the cone. So kind of learn with your horse how far ahead of time you need to start asking because most of the time you're going to need to ask before you actually get there in order for the, the change of gait to occur right where you want it to occur. Okay, so another thing that could be asked would be a stop. Again, we want everything to be smooth, to be willing. We don't want to see the horse fighting with his head. And if this is to be at a cone, then that cone needs to be somewhere between the horse's nose and the horse's shoulder. Another maneuver that's asked for in most showmanship patterns is a pivot. And this, if it's a turn more than 90 degrees, you're always going to turn that horse to the right. You're going to step towards the horse's head and he should move out of your space. And so you're going to walk kind of towards his eye here. And then he should plant a stationary pivot foot. So this should be his right hind leg. He should not pick up or move that foot. And then he should cross over with his front feet. The left front foot should cross over the right front foot. So you walk towards their eye. They should move out of your space. They'll keep, you know, a horse that's really responsive will keep its body pretty straight as he does this. He'll cross over his front legs and he'll hold that pivot foot stationary. Now these pictures on the bottom, I know they're just pictures, but you can tell these horses are not being very responsive because they're bending their head, they're bending their neck. This exhibitor's pushing on the horse and he's responding by turning his head and moving his shoulder. And this, the sorrel horse here on the bottom, you can see that she is reaching underneath. And when your, your hand is coming out on the other side of the horse's head, you know, as a judge, that tells me you're pulling on him. He's not just moving out of your space. You're having to physically pull on that horse. And so when the horse gets his head bent around like this and you're reaching through on the other side, you know, that, that sends a signal that this horse is really not being very responsive and he probably needs some more practice at home. Okay, we see backing in a lot of showmanship patterns where you're going to turn around, you're going to face your horse and you're, you're going to back him up. We'd like to see this be fairly quick. We want to see the horse be responsive. We don't want you to have to pull, pull, pull on him and we'd like to see him back in a straight line. So from the judge's perspective, if I'm standing in front of this horse and I ask you to back, what I want you to do is face your horse and your left shoulder should be in line with the horse's left shoulder, okay? What I don't want to see you do is step directly in front of your horse, okay? Horses have a blind spot directly in front of them and you would be in that blind spot. So that's not the safest place for you. And it's blocking my view of the horse. So you should turn, face the horse, and your left shoulder should be in line with that horse's left shoulder as you back him up. Sometimes you'll see people want to reach up and touch their horse. Okay, this is a, a major, major penalty. Um, sometimes you'll see him reach up and grab the rope with two hands. 
also a major, major penalty. Backing is not something that just naturally a lot of horses want to do very readily. And so this is also something that really does take some practice at home. Okay, so he's got his horse set up here. Now we're gonna back. So when the judge would dismiss him to back, he's gonna put his left shoulder right in line with the horse's left shoulder and just walk towards him. And this horse is really soft and responsive. He gives his head and he just backs up readily. Okay, sometimes when it's time to back, what I'll do when I give the exhibitor the sign, the signal to back, they'll step directly in front of their horse and try to back them from here. This is not considered safe as the horse could easily run over the exhibitor. So this is not what we wanna see. Okay, so this time he's gonna back his horse and we're gonna, we're gonna have the horse go crooked to show you how you can straighten that out. So he's gonna back his horse. And if you get to pull him too much on the lead rope, you'll see the horse swings their butt out to the side. If that happens, you just need to push the horse's head away and continue backing. And one other thing that I'll say, sometimes if you haven't practiced backing very much, the temptation is to switch your hands. Instead of having your, your right hand on the lead shank, sometimes exhibitors wanna put their left hand on the lead shank. That's a no-no. You should always keep your right hand on the lead shank. So you're just gonna face your horse. Yeah, your arm's gonna be reaching across, across your body, that's okay. And you're just gonna walk straight towards your horse. And, and if you've done a lot of practice, then they should back up and just move out of your space. Okay, so then of course, you're going to be asked to set your horse up. With our stock horses, we would expect them to be to stand with all four legs squarely underneath them. And we've got our front two directly next to each other, right under the horse's shoulder. We've got our hind two directly next to each other, right under the horse's hindquarters. And we've got them set up square. We're gonna let them hold their head in a fairly level, fairly natural position. Ideally, you know, we'd like to see them do this very quickly. Um, but accuracy is going to be more important than speed. If you've got a horse and, and it takes a little bit longer to set up, take the extra time and get them set up um, because that, that's going to be more important than doing it quickly. There are some differences. Again, we're showing an Arabian here, but some of your English and saddle type breeds will set up with the hind legs stretched further behind them. And that's acceptable for those breeds. And sometimes you'll see they're gonna show them with their heads up in the air like this. And that's where that whip can be used. They can, they can hold it up to, to encourage that horse to put their head up. Sometimes again, you'll see people wanna to touch their horse with either their hands or their foot. They'll wanna to, to kind of kick at the feet to make them set up. And these would be major penalties. You should be able to do it without physically touching your horse. Okay, and then once you've got the horse set up, we're gonna use what's called the quarter system in, in showing the horse as the judge walks around, you're gonna position yourself based on where the judge is. So if the judge is on the front half of the horse, I've got my letter J here, and the exhibitor is, is this pink circle. If the judge is on the front half of the horse, the exhibitor should be on the other side. So here the judge is on the left side, the exhibitor should be on the right side. If the judge moves to the hind quadrant, the exhibitor should be on the same side. So if the judge is in the left hind, the exhibitor should be in the left front. As the judge moves to the other quadrant on the back half of the horse, the exhibitor should, should move over so that he or she is on the same side as the judge. And when the judge moves into the front quadrant, that exhibitor will, will move away from the judge again. When you're showing your horse, you should have your toes pointed towards the horse's toes. Okay, so sometimes you'll see people, they're not quite sure how to stand and they'll, they'll stand facing the judge, but we actually want you to turn and, and point your toes towards that horse. You should have your hands up like you're proud of the horse 
And you should be standing kind of out in front of your horse like this exhibitor is. Sometimes I'll, I'll see people who get shifted too far back towards the horse's shoulder and they'll kind of get hidden behind their horse. So we want to see you kind of out in front. We have got your hands up, you're showing your horse and your toes are pointed towards your horse. Now here's another exhibitor. The judge is on the back half. So he's on the same side as the judge, toes towards the horse, watching the judge. Okay, so in showmanship, when the judge is inspecting the horse, we use what's called the quarter system. With the quarter system, we're gonna divide the horse in the quarters. So you see, I've got a stick here that's lined up. It points right between the horse's front feet, okay? So it's lined up right here at the front. As an exhibitor, if your horse moves, just fix it, don't change sides, stay where you are and fix it. And then look back at the judge and let the judge know you're ready to go. Now we're also gonna divide the horse in half from front to back. So we've divided him left to right. We've got our line that goes out in front of him and then one in line with his tail. That divides him left to right. We also have a line here that's gonna divide him front half from back half. Okay, it's kind of in line with his withers or his front legs. I've got a black rope on this side and a green rope on that side. Hopefully you can see that. So when the judge is in a front quarter, the exhibitor should be on the opposite side. When he's standing over there, I can clearly see the horse. He's not blocking my view. And if I were to tell him some instructions, he could see and hear me and, and do whatever it is I happen to ask. If he were to stand in front of me, and be in the same quadrant that I am in, then I cannot see the horse, okay? And as a judge, how can I judge a horse if I can't see it? Plus he's got his back to me. And if I were to use my hands and try to give him some signal, he would completely miss that. So he should be standing on the opposite side, okay? So that I can see the horse. And if I wanted to give him some instructions, he would be able to easily see and hear that. Okay, as the judge, when I cross, this line and move to the back half of the horse, the exhibitor should come over and then he will be on the same side of the horse that I am on. When I'm on the back half, even if he's on the same side, he's not going to block my view. As well, if I were to tell him or show him some instructions, he could easily see and hear me. And if this horse acted like he wanted to kick, all the exhibitor would have to do would be to pull on the rope, and that would move the horse's hindquarters away from me and keep me as the judge in a safe position. Now, anytime the horse moves, you should do just what he did. Fix the setup and then return to showmanship position. Don't get worked up about it. Just fix it and go back to showing your horse. Okay, so as the judge, when I walk across and I cross his tail, this exhibitor should meet me on the other side. So if I come across here, that was very nice. You take two or three smooth steps. You do not change your hands on the lead rope. You just cross over, look at your horse, look at the judge. Okay, so as I'm walking around, I'm on the back half. He's on the same side. That's right where he should be. I can see the horse easily. I can give him instructions. If the horse got fractious, he could pull on the horse's head, swing his tail away from me and keep me safe. But as I move towards this front quadrant, when I cross this line, he should move to the opposite side. Again, if he were to stay on this side, he would be in my way. He would be blocking my view. All right, so if I'm the judge and I'm on the back quadrant, the, the exhibitor should be on the same side. So this is good. We're at the end of our, our inspection. I'm gonna cross this line. It's gonna to move to the other side. That's exactly what he should do. But what I often see when the judge gets around to the front, the exhibitor just moves, okay? And what that did, that went right in front of me and blocked my view of the horse. So the exhibitor should hold their ground, okay? On the off side, should hold their ground over there. When the judge steps in front of the horse, the exhibitor should stay there, but be watching the judge. And if this, if this is the end of the pattern, when the judge nods at the exhibitor, then the exhibitor can move into this position and exit the pattern.
Okay, so speaking of patterns, when you get to a horse show, the judge will almost always have some sort of pattern posted. And, and there are some details to these patterns that you should pay attention to when you're looking at them. Okay, so here's just an example pattern. We've got three markers over here. You're gonna trot from the first clear to the third. You're gonna stop. You're gonna back your horse to the middle marker. You're gonna do a three quarter turn or three quarter pivots, and then you're gonna walk directly to the judge and set up for inspection. When the judge dismisses you, you'll do a 90 degree turn and trot off. Now, some things to pay attention to and some things to think about when you're looking at these patterns. The first one is which side of the cone should you be on? So in this case, you would be on the left side of the cone. So that's the first thing to note. Okay, then we're gonna trot a straight line down here to the, the third. We want to stop with this cone somewhere between the horse's head and shoulder. We're going to back up. Hopefully we're going to back nice and straight. And then when we get to this middle cone, we're going to need to do a pivot. Anytime you need to do a pivot next to a cone, right, that horse's body is pretty long. And as he swings his head around, if you are too close to this cone, you could plow that cone and that is not what you want to do. So you want to make sure you have at least a horse length between you and that cone. And if you happen to, to be a little bit out ahead of your horse's head, you're going to need more than a horse length here. So make sure to give yourself plenty of room next to a cone if you're going to have to do a pivot there, which means when you start this pattern at cone number one, you need to be plenty far away from that cone. So if you're doing a pivot next to a cone, make sure you allow yourself plenty of space. As well, if you're going to do a pivot and then head straight to the judge, you want to do that pivot with your horse's hindquarters aligned with the judge. Because if that hind end stays stationary, when you come around, then you'll be, you'll be in line with the judge. If you were to stop too soon, or if you were to keep backing your horse and have yourself in line with the judge, then by the time you do the pivot, you're going to be out of line with that judge. So those are just some things to kind of pay attention to. Now, here's another example of a pattern where you jog from A to B, you jog a circle, then you're going to walk to C, you'll do a turn and a quarter, walk to the judge, back up, um, and then when you're dismissed, you will exit. So whenever you're going to do a circle, you want that circle to be symmetrically aligned with the cone. So what I mean by that is when you get to the top of your circle here, if this is 10 feet past cone B, then the bottom of your circle should also be 10 feet past cone B. Sometimes an exhibitor will get to cone B and make a real sharp turn here, and the whole circle would be shifted so that it's between A and B. And we'd like to see, if we could extend a line past B, we'd like to see it cut that circle in half. Okay, then with this one, you're going to go ahead and go on up to C. You'll do your turn in a quarter. Again, after your pivot, you're going to go straight to the judge. So you want to do your pivot when you've got your horse's hindquarters in line with the judge. Here's a pattern where you trot to A. So you don't start at a cone. You're going to start back here ahead of the cone. You're going to trot to A. You're going to walk from A to B and do a 360 here. Because you're doing a pivot here at the cone, you need to make sure you've allowed plenty of space between you and the cone. Okay, you'll go ahead, you'll walk to the judge, you'll set up for inspection. And then this one has you back a curved line. So they can ask for that. And so, you know, again, when you're practicing backing at home, you wanna practice going straight and you wanna practice backing in a curved line. Um, and then this one has you walking off um, and then lining up again. So a couple more examples. Okay, so he's gonna walk up here past the second code and then do a pivot and walk to me. So when he pivots, what we want to see on this horse, we want to see the left hind foot, that white foot stay stationary and we want him to cross his front feet. 
Okay, that was a very nice, perfectly nice pivot. And then when you come out, you wanna come straight to the judge. And it should be the horse that's coming straight to the judge rather than the exhibitor. Okay, so he's gonna walk up here past the second cone, I'm the judge, and he's gonna do a pivot and come towards me. So what you should do is stop when the horse's butt is even with the judge. And right now the exhibitor's body is even with me. So when he does this turn, which the horse is planning a pivot, but he's crossing over in front, but now he's crooked, okay? He's got his head down and now he's trying to straighten up and he brought himself to me rather than bringing the horse to me. And so now as the judge, I'm lined up with the exhibitor rather than the horse. So when you do your pivot, you need to line the horse's hindquarters up with the judge. So when you finish that pivot, you can come straight to the judge. Okay, so we're gonna do the same pattern with a different horse. Oop. First thing I noticed. Sorry, we're gonna play this one first. Okay, so this exhibitor is gonna do a pattern. I'm as the judge, I am standing off to the side on the front half of the horse. And so the exhibitor is going to line the horse up. The horse's front legs are even with the cone. That cone should be somewhere between the horse's front legs and his head. And then the exhibitor, because I'm on the front half, the exhibitor should be standing on the opposite side. He's going to stay there until I nod at him. Okay, just nodded at him. So he's going to move to this side. His pattern is going to be to walk to this next cone and then trot. So when he trots, I want to see a smooth transition. I don't want to see that horse lift his head. He's going to stop and do a pivot. Notice he's got his hindquarters lined up with me. He's going to plant that pivot foot, cross his front feet. Now, he didn't quite finish that turn. Notice he should have taken another step to be straight with me. He brings the horse in line with me, not himself. Now I'm gonna back up so we can just see him. He's gonna set this horse up and then I'm gonna walk around for inspection. Okay, do you see how he let go of that rope and slid his hand up? That would be a major penalty, okay? We you want to keep your hand on the rope. Don't ever let go or slide your hand up or down. Okay, and that's why we practice. So we learn not to do those things. The horse moved, he went ahead and fixed it. That's good. I'm gonna walk around the horse. When I cross these front legs, he's gonna come around and meet me as I walk around the horse. When I cross the tail, he should meet me over here. That all looks good. I'm gonna walk up here. I'm gonna cross the horse's front legs, steps to the other side. Now, when I move to the front of the horse, he is going to hold his ground unless I commit to crossing into that other front quadrant, but I stopped right in front of the horse. So he stays there until I nod to dismiss him. When he's dismissed, he gets into position. Whoops, we're gonna back the horse. He just let go of that lead rope again and slid his hand up. That would be another major penalty, but the back was straight. It was pretty quick. Okay, he turned the horse, the turn was good and he walks off. Nope, oh, oh, sorry. Let me play this other video for you. Okay, so we're gonna do the same pattern with a different horse. First thing I notice, I'm on the front quadrant and the exhibitor's on the same side that I am. So he's in the wrong position. He's having to look clear over his shoulder to see where I am. But, you know, as the judge, I'm ready for him to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and acknowledge him. I'm gonna to nod to him and he will start his pattern. He's got his head down. We would like to see that head up. And then he needs to trot at the cone. That was not terrible, but he looked at his horse. I would rather not see him looking at his horse. Now his horse doesn't want to stop. Okay, he's not holding a pivot foot. He's not crossing his front feet. That was not what we want to see in the 360 or a pivot. Now he's going to come to me. He's going to try to set up. Okay, I'm going to back up so we can get a little better view of the horse here. Okay, he's going to set his horse up and then step back and signal to me that he's ready to show. I'm going to walk around the horse. When I cross to the back quadrant, he should be meeting me. Okay, so if your horse does this at a show and he moves, you just 
Okay, this is a mistake I commonly see. The exhibitor is going to circle the horse around. Ideally, if you can set them up without circling them, that would be preferred. If you do need to circle them, circle them to, in a counterclockwise direction, pushing the horse out of your space. Never pull the horse into your space. Okay, so I'm on the back quadrant. He's on the same side. His hand is hanging down. There we go. This looks better. When I cross over, he should meet me. He's being a little slow here. The horse has moved. Okay, now, and now he needs to try to set that horse back up without circling him if he can help it. Okay, he's going to try to get this horse set up. Now, as the judge, I'm sitting here thinking, ah, I don't think he's probably practiced a whole lot with this horse. Sometimes people have practiced and the horse is just nervous. And sometimes they act different at a show. And I understand that as a judge. But when the horse really stands and is responsive, you know, then I know for sure that exhibitor's been practicing. Okay, so when then when I cross onto the front end, should move across. Again, this horse is moving. I'm thinking maybe we have not practiced a whole lot. Okay, I'm going to, so the horse moved and, and he really didn't set him up. So as a judge, I'm taking note of that. I'm thinking, you know, he's, he's not being super accurate and super precise. And when he's trying to set the horse up, he's moving his feet all over. I'd rather see him not have to move his whole body and use his whole body to set the horse up. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and finish moving. When I, when I get to the front of the horse, I'm going to stop. Okay, I'm noticing this horse is being a little disrespectful. I'm going to go ahead and dismiss the exhibitor. Okay, now he needs to back. Okay, and this horse actually backed better than I expected him to. He is going crooked. He's turning his body. Okay, we should do a 90 here and walk off. So clearly this horse has not been worked with as much as the other one. And so consequently, you know, my score for the other one's going to be quite a bit higher. So yeah, that we've got some examples here. Like I said earlier, these, these are just ranch horses, pulled them out of the pasture. You know, this time of year is a great time to do some practice. We're not stomping flies. We don't have those issues. Um, but when you're practicing at home, you know, you don't, you don't have to shine them up. You don't have to put fancy equipment on them, but just spending some time every day makes all the difference. You know, you can tell one of these horses has been worked with and one of them hasn't. And I can tell you when we started, they both, <laughs> they both had major issues and, and we've done some work on one horse and not the other. And you know, that's what it takes. You can really make a lot of difference in, in a big hurry. And it doesn't, you know, you don't have to spend time saddling them and, and getting them ready. Just grab them out of the pasture, spend 10 minutes, work with them and, and put them away. And, it, and it, you can really have a pretty big payoff in a hurry. Okay, so in the new rule book, we just came out with a brand new rule book. It's got some penalties in it. The old rule book did not. And as an exhibitor, you can be scoring horses. You don't need to know what's a three-point penalty and a five-point penalty and a 10-point penalty, but you should know what the, which ones are minor faults, which ones are major faults, um, so that you can practice so that when you get to a show, you're, you're not performing these faults. Uh, the three-point penalties, those are the smallest penalties, so these are more minor than some of the others. But a break of gait at the walker jog up to two strides. So, you know, the judge is going to tell you which gait you should be in. Should you be walking or should you be trotting? If you break out of that gait, if you should be walking any trots or you should be trotting any walks, if you just do it for one or two strides, yeah, it's a penalty, but it's not a major penalty. If you over or under turn up to an eighth of a turn, we saw that example where, where he does a pretty nice pivot, but he doesn't quite finish it. He needed to take one more step to be in line with me. That would be a three-point penalty. 
If you tick or hit the cone, that's going to be a penalty. So when you start your patterns, you don't want to crowd that cone. You want to give it plenty of space. If your horse is, is basically pivoting correctly, but he slides his pivot foot, that would be a three-point penalty. Or if he lifts that pivot foot and puts it back down in the same spot, it's a penalty, not a major penalty, but still a penalty. Um, and the same thing in the setup. If they pick their foot up and set it back down in the same spot, that's it's a penalty, not a big one. And so, you know, in my mind, a horse that does one or two of these things could still be a blue ribbon horse. You know, maybe that takes you out of purple and into the blues, but that could still be a blue ribbon, blue ribbon go. Your five pointed penalties are a little bigger deal. So this one, if you don't stop, or perform the specific gait within 10 feet. So if you're supposed to trot and you can't get your horse to trot and it takes you 20 feet to trot, that's going to be a five point penalty. Or in this last pattern where we saw the disrespectful horse, you know, when he asked the horse to stop, it just kind of kept going and walked over the top of him. That's going to be a bigger penalty. That's going to be a five point penalty. If you have a big break of gait where the horse just keeps trotting, even though he's supposed to be walking or vice versa. If you split the cone, so that means you're doing your pivot. The horse is on the inside of the cone and the exhibitor has to go outside the cone to avoid stepping on it. That's going to be a five point penalty. That one's a bigger deal. If the horse steps out of his pivot or is moving his hind end, you know, again, that just shows that the horse probably hasn't been worked with a whole lot. Uh, that's going to be a five point penalty. Or if he steps out of his setup, and we saw some examples of that on these videos where the horse was moving, you know, he didn't just pick the foot up and set it back down. He actually moved out of the setup. That was a five point penalty. Or if he rests a foot, you'll see horses do this a lot with a hind foot where they'll they'll cock their hip and rest their hind foot. So, you know, five point penalty is a little bigger deal. These are things that are more likely to move you into that red ribbon category. Um, so those are, these are things that, you know, you want to practice. So when you get to the show, you're, you're not incurring these five point penalties as well over or under turning from an eighth to a quarter. So instead of just being one step shy of finishing your turn, maybe you're you're a whole quarter turn off from where you should be. That would also be a five point penalty. And again, those are probably going to move you into the red ribbon category. Now, the ten point penalties are are bigger deal. These are more likely to get you the white ribbons. So, and this first one is is a pretty common challenge for exhibitors if they don't understand the quarter system, if you're not in the required position during inspection. So the judge is on the back half and you're over on the other side, or I'm in the front half and you're in the same quadrant as me, that's, that's a more major penalty. So it's really important to spend some time learning that quarter system. Touching your horse or kicking it, um, you know, using your hand to push on it or touching your feet to his feet to try to get him to set up. Standing directly in front of the horse. I say this a lot during backing. Okay, loss of the lead shank. We saw that example where he had a hold of the lead shank and he lets go of it and slides his hand up. Okay, that would be considered a loss of control. If you hold the chain portion, okay, if that horse were, were to pull back, it would probably turn your hand into hamburger. Um, so that's a, a major penalty. Or if you put two hands on that shank or on that lead rope, that's also a, a pretty major penalty. As well as any sort of blatant disobedience. So this includes biting, kicking, rearing, pawing, striking, if the horse continuously circles the exhibitor and never stands still. So those are things that, that probably will get to a white ribbon. Okay, and then disqualifications would be like, you completely lose control, the horse gets away. Um, if you've 
come in and you don't have a number on, that's also a disqualification. Any sort of abuse, you know, the horse is running over the top of you and you start jerking the lead shank and maybe smack him with it, that would be a disqualification. Um, and right along with that goes excessive schooling or training, um, use of artificial aids. You know, you, in showmanship, you can't stand out there you know, with some sort of squeaky toy and try to get him to put his ears up. That's that's not allowed. Um, so illegal equipment would also be a disqualification. That would be running the chain over the nose or, or using the lip chain. And those are things that, that could very well get you a green ribbon. And so I would encourage you to spend some time looking at that rule book and kind of learning um, the magnitude of penalties. So, you know, these are minor, these are a little bigger deal, and, and these are the things you really want to avoid. Um, so that one, you can practice and, and spend some time at home so you don't incur those penalties. But two, if something does happen at a show um, and, and you end up with a red or white ribbon, you'll understand um, why that happened. As well as being off pattern. Um, so that's just doing the wrong pattern or forgetting part of the pattern and that'll get you disqualified as well. And there's some examples, knocking over a cone, that's kind of a big deal. If you never perform in the designated gate, um, over or under turning excessively, you know, that's considered either omitting a maneuver or putting in an extra maneuver. So we've got to be careful about that as well. So read your rule book. Practice, practice, practice. I know it's it's winter, it's January, but this is a great time to do it. Again, we don't have flies. We don't, you know, practicing showmanship with flies is hard. So we don't have that right now. Um, if you, you know, don't have time to ride or it's too cold to spend two hours outside, go grab your horse, spend 10 minutes practicing, put him away. You do that all winter long and you'll be amazed at, at the difference it makes when show season comes around this summer. Most of the time in showmanship, we do one horse at a time and we don't have multiple horses in the arena, but the judge has the option to do that. They can line you up side by side if they want to. Again, we don't see that very often anymore. But if that happens, make sure to leave plenty of room between yourself and other exhibitors. Now, something I would encourage you to do, if you really want to get good at showmanship, you know, watch the best, you know, aspire to what they're doing, you know. So if you go on onto YouTube and you put in showmanship, the AQHA has a lot of these where they've done a judge's perspective and the, the judge at the world show talks through the championship pattern and we don't expect you know we don't expect you to start at this level but if you kind of know what it should look like it's easier to get there if you don't really know what a great one looks like it's it's hard to to emulate that yourself so i would certainly encourage you to watch some of these videos and i'm going to play just one here for you to see an example of a really great one here in the judges room with AQHA professional horsewoman Holly Hobart, and she's going to tell us what it took to win the Showmanship Finals here at the Dope World Championship Show. Show. Whoop, sorry about that. Showmanship is a class, I think, that requires a wide variety of talents from both the horse and exhibitor. It's a test of elegance, it's a test of footwork, of concentration, of thought process. I think this exhibitor that you're about to see uh, really professes all of the variables that we like to see in showmanship. To begin with, she does a walk transition to a brisk trot, a tight corner straight to the judge. She proceeds excellently. The pace was beautiful. She moves into her turn and a quarter. You can see she's natural. Her step is balanced. It's of moderate speed. She completes her pattern. The horse is balanced. She now moves into a tight triangle of a walk, trot, back to a walk, a tight corner again at the walk, emphasizing guiding, moving into a brisk trot, 
back to a diagonal line straight to the judge. She's then setting her horse up. We look for all four legs to be square underneath her. She's absolutely perfect. Again, watch her flow. She's very natural. The horse is pleasant. She's now going to move into her 360. Her step is fluid. It's not rushed. It's not artificial. Beautifully done. Matching the horse's footwork. She completes it exactly on the mark. A little bending line into a straight line walk. We're going back to a triangle, moving up into the same pace of a brisk trot. Back to the downward transition of a walk a corner. And again, we're asking her to move forward into the trot. Back to a second diagonal line where she'll pause, set the horse up for a second time with a hesitation, direction by the steward to complete the pattern. Her backup is phenomenal. It's athletic, it's rhythmical, it's beautiful, it's not too much. She finishes with an outstanding turn. Again, her footwork, her style, her grace. This girl has all the components. Really, really a beautiful job. Okay, with that, we'll quit on a great one. Um, and I really appreciate you for hanging with me for an hour. And um, at this point, I would be happy to take any questions that anyone might have. Okay, thank you, Dr. Douthat. We'll give everyone just a minute to uh, type your questions into the chat. Um, if you would like, you can unmute as well. It does work a little bit better if you go ahead and type those into the chat, though. That way we don't have people talking over each other. Uh, we'll give you all just a minute as a reminder um, of some upcoming things we have in the Kansas 4-H Horse Project. Horse Panorama is taking place at the end of this month. However, if you did not register by last week, uh, you will not be able to attend that this year. Um, we do have the State Horse Judging Contest coming up in June, and more information will be shared about that very soon. If you are a 4-H horse exhibitor who would like to exhibit at the Kansas State Fair, those uh, rules have changed this year and they are updated on the Kansas 4-H horse website, as well as um, updated publications that support uh, those changes. And if you have any questions, as always, feel free to reach out to me. I did put in the chat uh, where the recording of tonight's webinar will be posted starting tomorrow. I'm going to go ahead and put my email address in there as well. And uh, if you have any questions about upcoming events or changes, feel free to reach out to me. And it looks like so far we don't have any questions. So with that, um, if you do think of questions afterward, feel free to reach out. Uh, Dr. Douthat, are you good with me going ahead and putting your email address in the chat here as well? Yep, I'm in the process of typing it right now. Perfect. Perfect. And I would be happy to answer any questions that way as well. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Um, if you uh, want to check out the Kansas 4-H Facebook page as well, I did share some information there today about um, an upcoming online hippology event that's taking place. It'll be an excellent opportunity for 4-H uh, horse enthusiasts to learn a little bit more about horses. And I do see Tracy is uh, mentioning in the chat that she's got a question. So go ahead and type that in the chat if you would, Tracy, and we'll go ahead and address that. We'll give you just a minute or two longer. Or Tracy, if, uh, if you need to unmute and ask that question, you can go ahead and do that as well. Okay, registered. Oh, yes. Um, you're registered for virtual horse panorama and not sure where to submit uh, those items. Go ahead and email them to me. There is a Kansas 4-H a general email, but um, you can go ahead and email those to me and I will make sure that those are submitted correctly. And my email address is listed up there. It is klnordike at ksu.edu. Okay. 
Any other questions? Once again, we want to thank Dr. Douthat for her time, not just tonight, um, but I know she took some time earlier to uh, make those recordings for us and really think out and plan uh, tonight's uh, presentation. So we appreciate all of the work and the effort and then her giving us her time tonight. So with that, we're going to go ahead and log off for the evening. Once again, if you've got other questions, feel free to email them to us and check out more information on the Kansas 4-H horse website. Have a great evening.